Hi folks, welcome back. A few years ago, there was a new technique in machine learning called word embeddings that made a lot of news. And what that allowed us to do was map words to vectors such that we could do a sort of vector arithmetic on words. And this is the famous example where you can say things like king minus man plus woman gives you something close to the word queen. That technique was called word to vec. What I want to look at today is another technique that is inspired by this one called code to vec, which tries to map snippets of code to vectors and then tries to extract meaning out of those snippets of code and tries to give those snippets of code good meaningful names. This paper was published in the 2019 Principles of Programming Languages conference and the work was done by researchers at Technion Israel and Facebook Research. So before we get into the technique itself, let's look at some examples of what they have been able to accomplish. The authors have actually put up their model on a website so we can see it in action. Let's look at some examples. If you look at this very first example, what does this look like? This looks like an array being sorted using bubble sort. And indeed, sort comes up as the highest probability name. If you look at this one, this snippet of code looks for an object in a list of elements and returns true if it's found and it suggests the name contains which sounds very very right. This one looks for an element and then returns the element. So this should be something like get or find and it returns get. This one returns the index of an element if it is found within an array and the name it returns is index of. So that's pretty good. It's doing a really good job of predicting sensible names for snippets of code. Let's look at a couple of other examples. This one looks like it's looping until some piece of work is done. And that's a perfectly reasonable name for that. What does this do? This looks like it's reversing the order of elements within an array. There you go, and the name predicted is reverse array. Let's do one more example. This is somewhat different. This looks like it takes an HTTP POST request. So what would this be called? This is called POST request, so that's pretty good. You can also look up methods that are similar to a given one. So the example they have here is COUNT, which is similar to others that do similar things like SIZE or INDEX or SUM. The vector model also enables combinations. For example, if you want a combination of equals and two lower, which checks for equality while converting its inputs to lowercase, you would get something like equals ignore case, which does exactly that. And this is a, a very cool analogy implementation. For example, receive is to download is the same as send is to, and this should be upload. There you go. So those were some examples of what this technique can accomplish. Let's go back to the paper and look at how they do it. All right, so coming back to the paper. A technique like this has many applications. One of the most obvious ones is in code review. One of the big things that reviewers look for when reviewing code is good naming of methods. And a technique like this can go a long way towards automatically suggesting good method names. Another application is finding out what API methods already exist. A programmer might not know about the existence of a library method and might be looking for slightly different names that accomplish the same thing. And this technique can point out 
existing methods that have the same or similar logic. The fundamental new contribution of this paper is to map snippets of code to vectors such that similar pieces of code map to similar vectors. How do they actually represent this code? Traditionally, a lot of NLP methods have treated text simply as a linear sequence of tokens. But when we're looking at something structured like source code, we should exploit all that syntactical structure. The authors here use the program's abstract syntax tree as their representation. And this structured representation allows them to learn common semantic code patterns. The technique here represents each code snippet as the set of all its paths through its abstract syntax tree. Now, when we represent a snippet of code using a set of paths, we also need a mechanism, which here they call attention, to assign a level of importance to each code path. Some code paths have more semantic impact on what the code is doing compared to others. And during the learning phase, they assign an attention or an importance value to each code path. And what this ends up accomplishing is that they can assign vectors to similar snippets of code such that subtle differences between snippets that otherwise look very similar can be distinguished. At a very high level, the technique consists of three steps. First, we extract syntactic code paths from a code snippet using its abstract syntax tree. And this is represented as a set of vectors. Secondly, they use an attention mechanism to assign an importance to each code path. And this finally produces a single vector that this code snippet is mapped onto. And once we have this vector, we can use it for various applications. The one they use in this paper is to predict a good name for this code snippet. Here we see three very similar code snippets that are subtly different. The first one checks if an element exists in an array. The second one actually returns the found element that you're looking for. And the third one returns the index of a found element. So these are all small variations on searching for a specific item within an array. And this technique is able to tell apart these small differences. As you can see for the first one, it suggests the name contains. For the second one, it suggests get. And for the last one, it suggests index of. Let's work through this example to see how this technique works. Step one is path extraction. We build the AST for the code snippet, and then we extract paths that go through that AST. When we extract these paths, we also want to assign an importance or an attention value to each path. This is the AST and the code paths for this first example. And you'll see that the attention value for the inner for loop is the one that is given the most weight. And this makes sense because that inner loop which looks for the element is the crucial searching part of this code snippet. Each of these paths is mapped to a vector representation, and that is what they call an embedding. During training, the values of these vectors as well as the attention value of each path is learned. And finally, these multiple embeddings for each path, along with the attention score of that path, are all collapsed into one single embedding vector for the entire code snippet. 
for their training data, the authors downloaded a lot of repositories from GitHub spanning over 1.7 million files and about 12.6 million methods. We see that just in terms of the speed of prediction, this technique is about two orders of magnitude faster compared to previous techniques in terms of how many predictions it can make per second. This vector embedding of code has some very interesting properties. We see that vectors that are close to each other end up being semantically similar as well. For example, the vector for size is similar to other methods that do similar things like length or count or get length. We can also do things similar to what we did with word to vec and do some kind of rough vector arithmetic. For example, if we have a method equals that tests for equality and another method to lowercase, adding them gives a vector that is close to an existing method that tests for equality of strings while converting them to lowercase. So that was a look at code to vec a new machine learning technique for embedding snippets of code into a vector space and then using that for various predictions. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.